How's it going guys? So here we are, the wait is finally over and the first video from the IAA is here. Now, over the course of this channel, we're going to show you everything possible that we can show you in this fish keeping hobby. Now it's going to be over all aspects of the hobby, whether it's salt water, whether it's fresh water, whatever you can think of, we are hopefully going to touch on it. Now we're always open to listen to you guys and if you've got any ideas that you want us to make for you or anything like that, get in touch with us and we'll endeavour to help you out. Now let's jump into our first video. Our first video, because we're new, we thought we'd start at the bottom and work our way up. So where's the first place you start when you want to get into this hobby? Setting up your first ever tank. So this video is going to help you out on doing that. Now, let's go over to Morris and he's going to start us off on tank selection. Hi guys, Morris here from Morris Aquariums and I'm here to talk about tank selections. Now, in our opinion, the best tank for a beginner is a 114 litre tank. That tank is 30 gallons and in our opinion is the best tank for a beginner. Now the reason why we feel that this is the best tank for a beginner is because it's not too large to maintain and it's also not too small. One of the benefits of having a larger tank at starting up is that it allows you a certain grace period to detect any problems or any adjustments that may be needed to your tank. For example, if there is an ammonia spike in your tank, if you have only a 5 gallon tank, your fish will be dead before you even know what happened. However, in a 30 gallon tank, you will begin to see symptoms of the fish being irritated, the fish being listless, and you can make adjustments so you know to make water changes, large and frequent water changes. This is what I mean by having a grace period to make adjustments. When selecting a location for your tank, you'd like to select a spot in your home that is cool, not hot, and away from sunlight, direct sunlight. Reason being for this is that direct sunlight causes algae growth in the aquarium. Sunlight promotes algae growth and algae blooms faster than anything else you'd know. Now I'm going to pass you over to Mike from Mass and he is going to educate you a little bit more on setting up an aquarium. What's up YouTube? Mike from Mass here, Mass Aquariums and uh, I want to talk a little bit about substrate and decorations for your tank. Now there's three basic types of substrate. You have your sand, your pea gravel and your dirt. Sand is really good for fish like African cichlids and geovagus. Dirt is great for live plants and pea gravel is good for really all different types of aquariums. Um, I really like pea gravel depending on you know what type of fish you have or what you're into you can get all sorts of colors it comes in natural colors pink purple uh, you can do any color you want it's basically what you want your tank to look like. Dirt is really good for live plants. It provides all the nutrients that your plants need to get good roots and grow really well. And sand is good for your African cichlids and your geovagus. Um, as far as decorations go, you just have to plan out what you're going to do and what you want to take care of. You can use rocks, you can use driftwood, it can be fake, it can be real, you can use live plants, fake plants. Um, all those type of decorations is all personal preference. If you want to do a lot of maintenance and take time to take care of your tank, uh, live plants is a great option. Uh, fake plants is good if you don't really have the time to do live maintenance. You can always pull those right out of the aquarium, rinse them off, and throw them right back in. They're easily moved around, and some people, they just don't have the time for live plants. I love live plants, as you can see. so. Most of my decorations are live plants and rocks. Now you can buy all this stuff at your local fish store, your Petco's, your PetSmart's. 
Um, but a lot of good ways to get it and cheap ways is to go for a walk in the woods and search for it. Uh, I have a lot of rocks in my tank that I just pulled right out of the woods, washed them off, placed them in the tank. Same with driftwood. You can find driftwood in your local streams or rivers. Um, you just want to make sure you boil it real good before you put it in your fish tank. So, all depending on what you want for your aquarium and what kind of maintenance and what kind of time you have is what you're going to pick for your decorations. Those are my three basic substrates and those are some decorations. I hope you got some good info and I'm going to send you over to Michael from Aaron's Aquarium. So now you've got your tank exactly where you want it and you've made it look beautiful inside. So now it's time to add water. Now there's a couple of ways you can add the water. First one is you can just take some hose, stick that into your tank and fill it up that way. Or if you don't have a hose available to you, you can go with the old fashioned bucket and a jug and just take your water and just fill it up that way. Now please be careful when you're putting your water into your tank because you don't want to ruin all your hard work that you did making the tank look beautiful on the inside. If you throw the water in too fast it will, will disturb everything so just be very careful. A good little tip for you is use just a little plastic Tupperware dish and tip the water into this. That will then overflow and it won't disturb your tank. So there's a good little tip for you. So now the water's in your tank, it's time to treat it. Now you can't really put fish in just tap water alone as it's quite high in like heavy metals and chlorine. So you get water conditioners which help detoxify the water and make it a lot more safe for fish. Now there's loads of water conditioners out there but me personally I go for API stress coat. This is a great water conditioner as far as I'm concerned. Um, it does the water conditioning but it also treats fish. Now it detoxifies metals and it removes chlorine but it also has aloe vera which helps de-stress fish and it also helps repair sick fish so it's a great all-around water conditioner for me now just get yourself a bottle of this follow the directions um, of how much to put in and then you're almost set to go now the next thing you need to do is add a heater now there's loads of heaters out there as well loads of different types but because we're sticking with the basic options we'll stick with a standard submersible heater now this all you simply do is take it out of the box, stick your suction cup to it which is just on a little clip like that, clip it on, place it right underneath your water so it's fully submerged, stick the, su the suction cup to your glass and then you're good to go. Plug it in and you're away. Just make sure on the top here you have a temperature dial, just make sure you set your temperature dial to the correct temperature that you require for your fish's needs and then just simply wait for your tank to get to the right temperature and you're almost ready to go. Now the next thing that you need to learn about is filtration. So I'll pass you over to my friend Paul Madfish and he'll help you out with that. So the method of filtration we've selected to use for this fish tank as it's a basic setup uh, is a sponge filter. The sponge filter is supplied with air using an air pump. From the air pump connected via some airline or air hose or air tubing depending on what you want to call it. The air is pumped through the hose and it draws the water up through the filter and out also creating water disruption at the surface and water movement within the tank aquarium. Um, the sponge filter collects up all the small and, and some large debris from out of the tank but it's very important that we set the filter up um, the filter is the home for beneficial bacteria which eats away at all the nasty waste and poopy doop within your tank. Um, this is what makes your fish sick and this is why we have fish losses. We don't want to lose fish so we've got to set this filter up correctly. Um, there's two ways to set your filter up. One way is called the fishless cycle. The fishless cycle consists of supplying your tank with a form of ammonia. Um, you can do this either by buying liquid ammonia or feeding your tank fish food and leaving that to wet, rot down. Um, this then builds up the bacteria nice and strong with on, with a, within your filter. Or the second way is a fish cycle. You can place 
small hardy fish within your tank, not too many, you only need a couple, and feed those and their waste and poof it up, uh, will also provide the ammonia that's required to build up that beneficial bacteria nice and strong so then we can start adding more fish. I'm going to pass you over now to the angry fish man to talk a little bit about what fish to select for your tank. So now that you have your tank cycled, you're going, what the fuck? What the hell am I going to put in this now? What do I start with? Well, I can tell you, you since it's a beginner tank, you're going to want to put the easiest fish to take care of in it. Uh, I wouldn't advise a goldfish. You might as well keep looking at a fucking toilet and pretend that's your tank because they're going to produce so much ammonia and shit, you're going to have a poop tank. Same goes with any cichlids or anything like that. You don't want to deal with aggression or or loads of shit from huge South Americans or Central Americans. I would advise just sticking with uh, guppies or mollies, maybe even one angelfish. You want it to be simple as possible, the easiest to take care of until you get to the swing of things. You want to get into the swing of things with water changes, uh, checking your water parameters, and just get into a habit of doing things. And plus, disease and sickness, that's going to be a whole other ball game. But for now, just stick with the easy fish. Some tetras, that'd be a great choice as well. Uh, this hobby is a pain in the ass, and it's a still a pain in the ass for me, or you can ask anybody else. So, that's what I'd advise. So that was that video for you guys. We really love making it. We've had a lot of fun and we're just going to be knocking out videos left, right and centre. Now we're going to get some informative videos here. We're going to get some just out and out silly, stupid videos here and everything in between. We're going to have a lot of fun with this channel, trust me. We've got five different brains, all slightly childish, all working together. So it's going to be a lot of fun, trust me. Now just below you can see we've got the IA commercial running. Now, in the future, we're going to have our previous videos in that box, so you can click on that and go back to our previous video. And then, if you just click on this side, you'll see Paul Madfish's logo. Click on that, and that will take you to Paul Madfish's channel. If you just click uh, that side there, that will take you to Morris McCombie's channel. If you just click down in the corner, just down in the corner down there, that will take you to the Angry Fishman's channel. Directly below, that will take you to my channel, and then if you just click just on the bottom corner down there, that will take you over to Mass Aquarium's channel. So, all the bases are covered. You might have seen all the way through the video just at the top, um, there was a subscribe button. If you click on that, that will take you to the IAA page and um, help you subscribe to us. So, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.